and to our left, the spirit of Great Britain, the lovely, gorgeous shape of the Avro Falcon. She's just waiting to take off. She's going to take off from left to right, and uh, then she'll turn away and uh, come back in for her display. She's starting her takeoff roll now. Avro Falcon B2. producing roughly 16,500 pounds of static thrust, 65,000 pounds in total. And of course, a sporting takeoff from the Balkan, she's much lighter than she was uh, when she was in operational service, had lots of operational equipment removed. Also, she doesn't have two stout navigators down the back, which always helps reduce the, uh, the, the weight. She has just three crew. Uh, the captain and flying today is Bill Ramsey. The co-captain is Martin Withers. Uh, Martin Withers, who uh, flew the Vulcan down to the Falkland Islands and back in 1982. And the air electronics operator, Phil Davis, uh, in the back of the aircraft, managing the complicated electrics of this aeroplane. Uh, he's on day release from Celex ES, so we're grateful to them for letting him go to uh, join in the team today. The display will start with Vulcan coming back uh, towards us on the so-called B axis uh, at right angles to the main display axis and uh, we'll take it from there. She's proved herself the single most popular airplane in the country. She's the people's airplane and she is of course held in trust for the nation. She's not owned by the Royal Air Force, she's not paid for by the Ministry of Defence, she's paid for solely by the great British people and the aviation industry. She's cost something like 20 million pounds to get to this stage so far. And you wonderful people have been immensely generous in contributing a significant proportion of that money. Spirited wing over there from uh, Bill Ramsey. So this aircraft was first of all thought of, the Vulcan, immediately after the war. The wonderful Roy Chadwick, who designed the Lancaster, drew on a scruffy piece of paper which still exists, a shape which is recognizable as Vulcan in 1946. Now that was only five years after the Lancaster first flew, which is quite extraordinary because when you look at this aircraft and you compare it to the Lancaster, they might have come from different centuries. She first flew in 1952, um, so that was only 11 years after the Lancaster first flew. So last year, we were celebrating the Diamond Jubilee of the first flight of Falcon, along with, of course, Her Majesty's Diamond Jubilee. And every time she flew last year, we had permission to say that it was in celebration of Her Majesty's Diamond Jubilee. Engines producing quite a lot of unburned fuel out of the back. But she comes back towards us. And if you look at the underside of the aircraft, I think you'll see the Bombay doors opening shortly. There they go now. That's the Bombay that carried 21 1,000 pound bombs all the way to the Falkland Islands and dropped them on Port Stanley runway, hitting them with two of them. That was about par for the course for a, a non-directed, non-smart bomb at the time. So it did the job that was required of it. 
What does the Bombe have in it now? Well, it has the names of lots of people who've sponsored their name to be in the Bombe. So if you would like to have your name flying in this magnificent aeroplane, you should um, go down to the Vulcan village at the far right-hand end, which is where Vulcan will be parked again when she lands uh, back at the end of her display. So go down and see them down there. You can sponsor, have your name uh, in the Bombay as she comes back. This time I expect to see the Bombay closing. She's got very good binoculars, might be able to read the odd name in there. Bombay closing now. Open and closed by Nobody thought that the Vulcan would ever fly again. But because the wonderful Walton family bought the last one, this aircraft, the last one in RAF service, and looked after her until along came Dr. Robert Clemming, who started up the Vulcan to the Sky Trust, which is the charity that still runs her to this day. She was helped by a 2.7 million heritage lottery grant. They didn't, uh, they refused it first time round. They said, we don't do things that move. The second time round, they gave the money. And since then, it's cost another, oh, 16, 17 million pounds to get her to this stage. Lots of help from uh, very generous donors, including lots of people here. But people like Sir Jack Haywood and enormous generosity in any foreign aeroplane. Big support from the Civil Aviation Authority many other companies, AD Holdings, BAE Systems, Beagle Technology, Cranfield Aerospace, Goodrich, Kearsley Airways, Beggins, Messier Doughty, Rolls-Royce and Serco, and of course, as you may have seen, she took off EADS, great help from them. Marshall Aerospace and the Engineering Authority, they have of course had to satisfy the Civil Aviation Authority that they have all the necessary capabilities and experience to be the authority for this globally unique restoration of a military aircraft. Marshall Aerospace has been there for Vulcan doing this essential work since 1999. Despite all that help, it's still costing £2 million a year to run the whole shebang. So the charity has to raise £38,500 every week. completing a spiral climb and then he'll spiral back down again. Much of the fundraising that I was talking about just now is done by the Balkan to the Sky Club, one of the biggest uh, uh, aviation restoration clubs in the business. If you want to join they'd be very happy to have you so uh, perhaps you should get to the Balkan village when she's finished her display and uh, join the Balkan to the Sky Club. She now lives this magnificent aeroplane in what used to be RAF Fittingly. She was actually based there uh, between 1960 and 1968. But it's now snappily known as Robin Hood Airport, Doncaster, Sheffield. She lives in a sumptuous hangar there. And uh, she takes visitors, go and see her when she's not flying. And they'd be very happy to welcome you up at Robin Hood Airport, Doncaster, Sheffield. It's easier to call it. the wheels down now. I don't think that means she's landing straight away, uh, but uh, we shall see a, a, another slow fly past. You'll be able to check on the, the colour scheme. She has the Lincoln coat of arms on the tail fin, uh, representing, of course, Lincolnshire being the 
bomber rally of the Royal Air Force. She also has the Panther's head of number one group of bomber command on the nose because she does represent all the Falcon squadrons in the 1970s. 9, 12, 27, 35, 44, 50, 83, 101, and of course, 617. And we're having a special celebration of 617 later today. I should say somebody who's not on board today uh, is Kevin Taftstone, the crew chief and the chief engineer. He always says, 558XH558, this airplane is my baby. And I, it was, I was questioned the other day as to why I always refer to her as she. Well, Taff put it quite nicely, said she's definitely female. She is very high maintenance. She requires a lot of looking after. goes away you get an idea of how slim she is uh, in cross section just a reminder that's not Ken doing that that's Bill Ramsey so I think that's almost um, the end of the display. I know that the Vulcans of the Sky Trust would really love to see you down at the Vulcan village, uh, down at the right-hand end, quite close to where she parks. Later this afternoon, you may be able to uh, get a tour around under the wing of the aircraft, a guided tour, and people will tell you uh, a lot about her. Um, that all takes place down at the Vulcan village. Uh, that, of course, depends on uh, other aircraft movements, but we're hoping to do that this afternoon. Uh, if you're not going to go down to the village, the website is falconsofthesky.org, well, falconsofthesky.org. You could even contribute money at this very moment by getting out your mobile uh, and sending a text. You text the words, the letters and figures, VULC133, V-U-L-C, 133, to the number 770, 70070. So text. Bulk 133, VULC 133 to the number 70070. It will cost you three pounds. You have to have the permission, obviously, the person who pays the bills. All of that three pounds will go to the Vulcan to the Sky Trust. Uh, they'll contact you and say thank you and enable you to use gift aid. Uh, as she comes in for her uh, final approach, uh, out to the left, because this is a very long runway here, uh, I doubt we shall see the breaking parachute, which is rather a shame because it's a magnificent thing to see, but she doesn't need it on this uh, nice long runway. Uh, but I suspect we will see Bill keeping the nose wheel up uh, for as long as he can, uh, allowing the um, great size of those delta wings to uh, hit the oncoming airflow and slow her down uh, without even troubling the brakes very much on her 16 main wheels. I can see her just touching down now. So, once more, thank you to everybody who has supported this magnificent aeroplane. We're immensely proud to be able to continue to display her in front of you. We did think this was going to be her last year. Uh, there's something called Operation 2015, which may well mean that she goes on flying until the end of the 2015 season. More about that, we found out that the market on the website. Look at that, air brakes out, those wheels held high, just dropping down to make this fast in drive. Thank you very much for being with us. Please do go down to the Balkan village. We'll look forward to seeing you there. And thank you.